Hi, I'm Lynn Samita, and today I'm focusing on overwhelm. Who hasn't felt a sense of overwhelmed um, today in our world of fast-paced everything? Communication is fast, everything moves quickly, and we are so into the immediacy of things. And so I think a lot of that contributes to an even greater sense of feeling overwhelmed. And so I wanted to focus on it because I think many people struggle then with what do I do when I have that feeling of too many balls in the air, too much going on. There is a myth that we can multitask. And in fact, I call it a myth because the brain actually doesn't multitask. It switches from task to task. And what the research now tells us is we compromise things when we multitask. We're not as present, whether it's for a conversation or fully attending to a task that we're doing. When we keep switching back and forth, it does affect quality. So as we look at overwhelm and how we manage it, we've provided a wonderful little cartoon here called Harry's Control Room. And when I first saw this, I thought it was absolutely adorable because there's Harry with all of the dials and the gadgets and so on, this whole control station of how he's going to manage life. Is he going to run away, do the fight, the flight kinds of patterns? Is he going to physiologically react? The anger, the sweating, the whatever. And what beliefs and what patterns are stored in that file uh, container over on the side? So it's really a great cartoon illustrating that at any moment in time, we're really looking at how do we manage? How do we cope? One of the things that we know is when we're really struggling with coping and feeling overwhelmed, that we can actually get into patterns that don't serve. Some people actually have a pattern of being more accident prone. They may call themselves clumsy or whatever, what we really know is when people are accident prone, they're actually out of alignment with themselves. In a sense, they're not really fully present and they're juggling many things not fully in the moment. So if you're noticing that you've had some bumps, some scrapes, cut your finger or more significant accidents, those are signals for any one of us to pay attention because you don't want your whole system in that state of overwhelm when things are starting to happen like accidents. Another thing that's really interesting in the whole understanding of the brain, we now know that the brain is clearly flexible. It's called plasticity, that it is able to change and to grow. And there's really an interesting concept that describes what happens for the brain. When we have an experience, it imprints on the brain. And so we have what's called experience-dependent neuroplasticity. That fancy term means that our brain is being changed by the experiences we have. That makes lots of sense, right? Well, how about this? When we complain about something that's happened, that imprints on our brain too. And the research now is saying that when you complain out loud, you actually trigger more anxiety and for some people more depression. And what happens there is by complaining out loud and talking about what's not working, we're actually reliving those experiences, re-imprinting on the brain, and it gets caught in a loop that creates anxiety and creates distress that we then have to cope with. So I guess the billion dollar question is, how do we effectively handle overwhelm? Is it possible to be juggling many things and really be in the flow? And our belief is it's absolutely possible that we can be out of overwhelm and into a much healthier state of flow. But it means that we really need to clear out the backlog so that our system, almost like a computer, is running clean and clear and as fast and as efficiently as it really can. 
lots of times the things that are slowing us down, the things that are backlogged in our system, we don't realize. That's why we need help. We need help with, from people that can really identify the root of some patterns and help us clear those. So if this is registering for you, if you're really noticing that you've been doing some patterns that are not serving you, whether it's within yourself and the anxiety or the distress, or whether it's in relationships, colleagues, par partners, family, if you're doing patterns that you don't feel are really good for you or good for the relationships, then I encourage you to reach out. We'd love to be of help. And please feel free to pass this video on to someone if you think they would enjoy it, if it would be helpful to them too. Thanks for watching.